A picture changes the more you look at it. It changes in ways that are unexpected. Back in the early 1960s, Siena became the first Italian metropolis to restrict access to motor vehicles. So the only way to get into the city is on foot. We got off the bus at the edge of the city, pulling on our suitcases over the wet cobblestones into a lit web of alleyways. The street was lined with narrow houses that loomed over us. The sharp turns of the passageways and the closeness of the buildings made me think we were entering a living organism. The deeper we got into the city, the more it welcomed us into its urban life. We came upon the rented flat that we were staying in. The facade was unassuming. It looked similar to the facades across the street, yet it had its own character. A facade that stands out amongst the rest of the buildings, not something really elaborate or expressive. It is simple yet sophisticated and thought through. Once inside, we took the staircase to the first floor. The noise from the street slowly begins to drown out. We came into this perfectly proportioned room. The high fresco ceilings juxtaposed the sober facade. I was in a place that was both known and deeply unfamiliar. The modest exterior made the beauty of the interiors even more beautiful. I would walk around Siena and in a way carry with me, like a private song, the fascination I had for those rooms. I have chosen to locate my site right in the heart of Siena. It will be placed on an existing market that already sits behind the Palazzo Publico and also faces out to the open valley to the south. My focus last semester was on how we can interpret space, more specifically the definition of a room and a piazza. A piazza by definition is an open public square, surrounded by buildings and usually the centre of public life. A room is a space that can be occupied or where something can be done. And so with this in mind, can a piazza then not be a room? This was the foundation on which I began to think about how space is interpreted. Taking a singular concept and changing the scale, which then changed the way the space perhaps felt, I thought was an avenue to take through the means of the scaling hierarchy. I have essentially made an outdoor room with space above that is loosely based on domesticity. The ground floor intended for a market is surrounded by buildings on three sides with the arches framing the view of the valley below on the fourth. I intend for materiality to play a large part in my thesis. Stone will be the main chosen material as it has no definitive scale. It can be used as cladding as its thickness can be as little as 10 millimetres or mixed with cement to form larger elements of a building. As Giallo Siena is local to the region with the nearest quarry being only 31 kilometres away from the site this is my primary option. Carrara marble is another material I would like to use. Although its quarry is much further away, meaning carbon emissions will be higher, in comparison, it will be far better than importing materials overseas. Extracting marble can be done by drilling a series of holes into the stone that meet at a singular point, and then a five millimeter diamond wire or a large chainsaw is used to saw the remaining sides until the block is completely detached from the mountain. The next stage in the development of my thesis will take me away from the book and look at how I can take my project outside of the domestic topology and be more free with my plans and sections. I'll also be looking further into Gilles Peridun's work with his construction in massive stone. We often think of buildings not as a space where human life takes shape, but more like a place where certain functions and activities take place. I think Sienna resists this.